Hey, this is Flo and welcome back to the next part of the 30 day stocks app challenge. On the right side here you can already see the result, which the, uh, how the app will look like after this video. So we will focus on implementing a line chart to display the change of the stock in the course of the last day. So for that we will use the shape protocol provided by SwiftUI. So I will just create a struct called line chart and conform it to shape. And the only thing that um, is needed for the um, for the conformance is a function called path and rectangle, um, in which we will have to declare the path that the shape is supposed to take. Okay, so let's create a path, just like this, and um, we will basically move this path around in the rectangle that we're given, which is the surrounding rectangle of this shape. And then in the end, we will return a path. First of all, we need a starting point. So let's start equal a CG point. And we can use this X and Y initializer. And for the X value, we will use our surrounding uh, rectangles minimum X, which is the top, uh, the bottom left. And uh, the left, sorry, and then for the y value, we will actually start at the value of the first um, point or the first data point. So uh, what we need is obviously an array of values, which in this case we will make of type double, um, because that's what we are going to receive uh, later on from our stock data entries. So for the y position, we will use the max y of our surrounding rectangle minus, and now we need to do a computation here. So a CG float once again um, of the first value in our array times the max y. <clears throat> so this is just a scale and y is actually zero at the top and max y at the bottom. So um, we have to do this inverse calculation here with max y minus some percentage times max y. <clears throat> okay. Good, and then we can actually move the path to this starting point, just like this. Okay, so next we want to go over all of the values in our array and move the path to the corresponding point. So for index in values dot indices dot drop first because we actually already moved to the first point here so we don't need it now iteration now so we can call it drop first over the indices here and then first of all we need to um, compute the value so um, everything in sh in um, shapes needs to be uh, of type cg float so we will have to convert our value to CG float here from double to CG float. Next, we have to calculate our X and Y positions, and um, the X position is basically um, how far to the right in the graph um, this point should be. So, um, CG float of the current index divided by a CG load of the values that count you would do minus one if you iterate over all indices but we have to do minus two because we dropped the first index and then we will scale all of this by the maximum x value so this is basically zero for the first index and then uh, one for the last index and scales in between and then we have to multiply it with the width basically of the rectangle, which is this max x. Okay, then we need to also calculate our y value, which um, we will get by taking the maximum y value and uh, subtracting a CG float of our value times the max, max y. So basically the same that we did up here for the starting point. Okay, then we can put both of these coordinates together in a CG point 
So we will use X and Y for that. And then we can add a line onto our path to this new point. And now we already have this top part here of the graph. But in order to use the gradient, we actually need to draw a line back down and to the beginning. And for that, we will just say path.add line to a new CG point with the maximum x, so on the far right, and the maximum y, so at the bottom. And then we will have to add a line basically to the uh, bottom left, so rect.min x and rect.max y. And then I will also add a path back to our starting point, so path.add line to start. Okay, so this is basically the shape that we need. And now we can go um, into our content view and replace our rounded rectangle with the line chart, which needs some values from the stock. And to make this a bit easier, we will actually create a computed variable in the stock data called close values, which will be an array of type double. For that, we will first of all take all of the raw values, which will be our time series 5 min dot values, because this is a dictionary here you can see, and we only need the stock data entries. So we will use the dot values. Um, member here and then we will map this into a double oops, into a double of dot zero dot close and we will actually force unwrap this because um, the close here is a string as you can see but we need the double inside of that string and as we are sure that it will actually be able to convert this we can force unwrap it okay then we need a max value, which will basically just be raw values dot max, just for the scaling of the graph. Then we need a min value, which is raw values dot min. Of course, unwrap both of these because they actually return optionals. But we know that there are some values here, so we can safely force unwrap them. And then we will just return raw values dot map. And um, we will just scale it now, so um, the original closing value minus our minimum value times 0 0.95, just to have a bit of a buffer here, so the jumps aren't as large. Okay, and, um, and then divide all of that by our max value, once again minus the min times 0 0.95, and uh, put in a space here and this should be our final set of close values so now we can actually pass them into a line chart in content view so we can just call stock dot close values the computer property that we just created and pass it into the line chart and what we can then also do to make it to give it this gradient we will just say Dot fill, which is a function that you can use on um, on shapes, and you can fill it with a color, but you can also fill it with a linear gradient, just like this. I'll try to make it a bit prettier, um, like this. Okay, and for that we will use a gradient of. Oops. dot green dot opacity 0.7 and then for the second value we will also use dot green dot opacity 0.2 and then we will actually also add a third value dot green dot opacity 0 and then we want it to start at the top and end at the bottom okay and now we can run this in a simulator and it should look exactly the same as it does right now. Okay, so as you can see, we have our uh, line chart now. Um, the only thing that I would change still is to actually 
um, make this V stick here a fixed width so the line charts actually align. So we can just give this V stack a frame with a width of let's say 100. Run this again. And now you can see it's all very well aligned. Okay, so that's it for this episode on the graph. And um, in the next episode, I think we will handle, handle um, adding and removing symbols from the list.